Ways of the Wild Institute here in Vermont. I'm going to do a, uh, a short little uh, video series on trapping. Uh, natural snare work. Now I hesitated in making this because uh, it does involve techniques in which claim the lives of uh, other creatures. Now knowing this, I want to make it um, very clear in the beginning of this series that if you go out to practice or utilize these snares, do so with the understanding, with the reverence and respect of the fellow creatures whose lives you are uh, attempting to take, okay? Snares are made simply for that. They are made for killing. And even though that killing is many times necessary in survival situations, it still has to be approached properly. This means a deep respect, understanding, and a thanksgiving from within the self. All native cultures around the world, <coughs> around the world, excuse me, have known this and utilized this for thousands and thousands of years. Just because we're in the modern world doesn't mean we no longer have to give thanks when we take a life. Taking a life is never easy. I can tell you this from personal experience. But it is, like I said, necessary. Trapping and snaring is one method that we can utilize our skills and techniques to work for us while we are doing other things in a survival or camp situation. So the snare can be working to hunt while we're purifying water or making fire or building shelter. And another thing that the snare does is it, it actually removes us from the kill itself. It's like a long distance weapon, okay? So you're not actually face to face with the kill. So don't let this illusion fool you into thinking that the kill is any less than it is by utilizing a knife or a bow or a gun, because it's not. So with that said, to begin this series, we'll start our first snare. The snare we're going to cover is the, uh, the water snare. Now this is a pretty easy one. Uh, to start out with, materials you need are simple. You need a, uh, a stick, you need a rock, you need some uh, twine, and of course you can use uh, watap or um, uh, vine material. I'm going to use this because it's bright and it's easy for the camera to see. You need a body of water, which is uh, deep enough and also contains a, uh, a fair amount of um, uh, activity for uh, uh, the wildlife. So beaver, waterfowl, muskrat, things like that. That is what this snare is for. So what I'm doing here is pretty simple. And I'll show you here in a minute when it's all done. But uh, I drove a stake in the ground, that stick, I drove straight into the ground right next to the water's edge. And I took one piece of line and I tied it to the bottom of the stick in a bowling knot so it will not come undone. Then I tied that rope to this rope, which I tied around the rock so it will not slip off of the rock. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking 25 pound test fishing line, I'm tying it to the rope that comes off of the rock. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the fishing line using a fisherman's knot into a lasso hoop. I'm sorry, I used a fisherman knot to connect the uh, fishing line to this line this uh, rope here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, slip knot to tie a noose in the fishing line. It's all set up. should look like this. Okay, right here you've got that long stick that I showed you and I drove that into the ground right next to the water slide. The slide where the animal goes in and out of the water. 
All right. All animals that enter the water have ground access points, even the wildfowl. Uh, the waterfowl that come through, the ducks and things, they always have um, an escape route across the land just in case they cannot fly or <clears throat> they happen to be on land and their best and safest route is taking off into the water instead of taking flight, which a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, waterfowl do. Now what you have over here is a rock that is heavy enough to sink my prey. Okay, you've got to make sure that that rock is heavy enough to sink the prey. And what I did here, whoop, other way, all right, what I did here is I set that rock right on the edge of the water. Okay, so it will easily fall in once the animal pulls it. Now, that rock is tied to the stick. And that rock also has a string, like I showed you, that comes off and attaches to my noose. And if you look right here, you'll see that noose. Okay? It's supported by that twig and that brown twig. Those twigs are just pieces of uh, dried grass standing up there. They're not sunk into anything. Okay? So they're just basically propped there to hold that noose open. You can see the noose down here in the grass as well. Big circle. Now the slip knot is here. That comes over and it attaches to a rope that is attached to the rock. And the rock's rope is attached to the stake. So what happens is the animal, whether it be a beaver, a muskrat, waterfowl, will come down through its normal slide to get to the water. Now notice that its only choice is to go through that loop. All right? And this is on a, a slide that's already here, so they're already comfortable with going in and out of the water utilizing this slide zone. So the animal's head goes through that noose. As soon as it goes through that noose, they panic because they feel something around their neck. As soon as that happens, and of course that slip knot tightens as soon as that animal goes through. The bulk of the animal's weight pushing behind its head ends up pulling that knot closed. Now, what happens is that animal then panics and takes off to the water, which is its most comfortable habitat for safety. Very few predators will pursue the animal into the water. So, that animal jumps into the water. It's got that noose around its neck. It dives into the water. This rock being propped right there on the edge, easily falls in the water. Now the water's depth here, you probably can't see in this video, but the water's depth here right off the, sh right off the, uh, the shore is two feet. And then uh, very quickly increases in depth. So that rock falls in, it rolls into the water, sinks to the bottom, pulls the animal down under and holds it there. The animal drowns. You have to make sure the rock is heavy enough. You have to make sure all your knots are secure enough so none of them slip. And that you have a stake that your rock rope is tied to so that the animal doesn't swim off in its panic, dragging the rock deeper to where it's more difficult for you to get. This unfortunately is not a quick trap. This includes the animal drowning. So make sure everything is set perfectly so that the animal does not suffer undue pain and trauma. Now after you have everything set, what you can do is get yourself some, uh, some real lightweight camouflage just to set up here. It doesn't interfere with the trap at all. Whoops, sorry about that, I almost dropped the camera in the water. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's all you have, okay? You've got everything kind of underneath uh, some lightweight green cover. You've got your stake, your rock, your ropes, and there is the noose in the slide that goes directly into the water.